that like if it's not American and if it's not local yeah. like in terms of the visuals what were you trying to achieve? I was just trying to reimagine what a Singapore what a Singaporean film can be. It's it's almost like the chaos that goes on in a teenager's yes. mind, right? Yeah, there was a, another quote somewhere that says if you don't die for something, you live for nothing. I I question that. Maybe ideology can be a dangerous thing and and sometimes we need to be afraid of what we are fighting for. Yeah. yeah, welcome to Books Actually. Actually, first we want to thank Books Actually for being like, you know, the venue sponsor. This is as cool as it gets, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I have the honour of speaking to writer and director, Zhang Merlin Tong. Hello. Um, so, Zhang was actually a guest on a show that I produce on CNA 938 Now, which is called Trending. And I believe you spoke about Fairyville. Yes. Uh, now, the thing about Fairyville is that it is mostly described as a dystopian film. Yeah. yeah. Mostly uh, described as a dystopian TV movie. Yeah. Am I, am I loud enough? I'm just my pants. It's just that I'm I'm uh, very loud because <laughs> that's what I do for a living. You're yes, you fact, you need to be a Okay, I'll speak. Okay, I'll speak. Okay, I'll speak. Okay, I'll speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Fairyville yeah. was produced, I believe it was featured in, uh, it aired in 2015. Yes. And today we're launching the DVD as well as you know, those super cool uh, statues. That's the rebel saint, which today I found out is the protector of rebels and thinkers. So I need, I need that in my home. And it looks great on the bookshelf. So I mean, you should probably grab one of that. So um, Zeng, uh, I myself am a script, uh, screenwriter. Mm. And I have to ask, the first thing that always comes to mind, right? With things like this is, when was the birth of Fairyville? I mean, Fairyville, it's a dystopian teen movie set in a in a fictitious uh, uh, imaginary world yeah. alternate universe, yeah. and the world itself is created a long time ago when I was a nineteen year old teenager. Okay. It, it, the world existed in my very first film. It's called E Saints. I mean, when I was nineteen years old, when I was still in poly, okay. I wanted to talk about the superficial notes of life, and the world in Fairyville at the time, yeah. set in Fairyville College, was revolves around the the world of misfits who can't fit in and they chose to be the lie. Okay. In this very view, uh, years later after I finished making my first film, I, I think the world has changed quite a lot. Uh, in 1999 when I was making it, it was the Colombo High School killings that got me thinking about a few things. Right. In 2001, it was September 11th. Mm. And very, very honestly, uh, uh, the, the events that happened in the world after that uh, got me questioning about a lot of things. Got me anxious or fearful of the future. Yeah. As with all dystopian fiction writers, I think we, we make films because we, we we need an outlet to express something. Right? Yeah. To express a concern, express a fear, a fear for the future. And at the time I was looking, hey, I see how people are radicalized more and more mm. on both sides. Uh, uh, <coughs> on the side of ideology and also also in the mainstream as well. Okay. You see the mainstream um, uh, forcing people to take a side. It's something that, that 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 concerns me a lot. So therefore, while the first one was about being the lie, yes. the second one is about maybe uh, addressing the lie. Is now just be afraid of what you fight for. How ideology can suddenly become a, a dangerous thing. It got me thinking about a lot of themes that we see in Hollywood movies. How choose the side. Uh, fight for it. Uh, yeah. You've got to believe in what you fight for. But suddenly, I, I question this this American pop fighting for what you believe in. Uh, there, there was a, another quote somewhere that says, "If you don't die for something, you live for nothing." I I question that. I mean, I, I uh, it's not an answer. It mm -hmm. is a question. I'm questioning mm -hmm. that that thought of uh, the the maybe ideology can be a dangerous thing and and. Sometimes we need to be afraid of what we are fighting for. And I try to express that in the world of, in a college, uh, with young people, with misfits, with teenagers, yeah. in, in a school. And I thought it, it's, a, it's an appropriate environment to, to set this world in. The, I think it's always the best place to always start something is with the young, right? When they're yeah. in school, when, they're, when their minds can be shaped and That's formed. Right. And, and like with all writers, I dare to say also that um, an idea always comes from a personal place. 
Mm. And then you pick from all the other things like you mentioned, you know, the Columbine killings yeah. and, and September 11 mm. and everything. Mm. Um, why did you choose this particular genre? Because like with most filmmakers, right, it would easily, it would be the easier choice to go with something that is sort of mainstream and then you tweak it a little bit and make it look cool or different. Right, right, right. But you kind of, I mean, I watched Fairyville and I can tell that it's, it's, uh, the, the genre is very deliberate, you know what I mean? So, so why did you choose that instead of because all the stereotypes are in the film, but you managed to do something different with it. Right, you've got right, the jocks, right. you've got the the misfits, you've got the it girl, right? <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. you took all those stereotypes mm. and you put it in what I would say is a completely different genre. Yeah. And and why? I mean, was it just an attempt to be different or bold or daring, or did mm. you feel that it was absolutely necessary for the film? Um, First and foremost, I'm a, I'm a big fan of teen movies. I really love the, the, the teen movie, the teen movie genre. And e even be it, it's Grease or uh, 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 Cry Baby. I love the, the, the teen world you know, and, and the American teen movie as well. You know, how there are different social types, different typecasts. I thought it's a brilliant uh, place to, to set the world in. Also, I also always believe that youth is always a time that we are at our most creative uh, uh, um, be it music, be it, be it uh, bands, uh, uh, some of their most seminal work comes when they're, they're, they're young. And it's and probably because we're most vulnerable then also. We're most vulnerable, we're most passionate, we're falling in love for the first time, we're reading books uh, that, that expand our minds for the first time, we suddenly believe in something for the first time. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great uh, uh, environment or a world to, to, to set this in. And, um, uh, and therefore, I said it in a teen world, I play with all the troops. Uh, uh, when I grew, I grew up with with this whole MTV Asia thing going on. And yes, um, you realize that teenagers, uh, people have commented that Fairview looks a little bit American. Uh, I won't say it's American. I say it's that pop culture world. It's a pop culture world that every teenager okay, in a really modern too. in a modern world mm. in a modern city. Uh, yeah. lives in, in their heads. Right? It doesn't matter whether you're in Manila, whether you are in Kuala Lumpur, whether you're in Bangkok. In, when you are a teenager, this, that, the world that you live in is that, that world of teenagers, the world of, that is very, very hyper real. Right? Yes. Uh, uh, back then it was MTV, now it's something else. But we all know that world. Fairview is set in that way. Yeah. Yeah, not in Singapore, not in the US, but set in that way. And to a certain extent, even as adults, we yeah. kind of still dabble in that yes, world, don't we? Yes, yes. Yeah? And um, would you say it's also a, a coming of age, yeah, sort of film, right? Where, where where the you know the misfits are trying to find themselves, and then am I allowed to give it away? Of course, no, I think of course you can. Yeah, yes. you know, and then eventually they do mm. find their place in this world, you yes, know. Yes, yes. Which I remember when you spoke to me, you said it's it's almost like the chaos that goes on in a teenager's yes, mind, right? Yes. And it's all rectified in the movie. Correct. correct yeah. Correct. So also kind of coming of age, kind of like Breakfast Club. Or, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that, that big team of, of being afraid of what you fight for, that big team of, of a dystopian universe. Uh, but come to it, it's a story of teenagers trying to grow up. Teenagers trying to go out and find their place. And in our story, it's about four boys, four losers, four misfits, yeah. who are actually afraid of graduating. Because the moment they graduate, then what? It all ends. Yes. Oh, it all ends? With the question mark. That's what they are asking us. Does it all end? Because uh, what happens? Are, will we be packed into. So in a quote from the film, where we were packed into battery packs ready to be used by the world. Okay. What, what happened to the all the youth energy uh, uh, that, that, that's, that's in us, mm. right? I think every, every artist, every musician, uh, every painter, maybe in their youth, would have thought about that as well. At what time do we need to stop doing what we do and grow up? Mm. And I think there is a... I still ask myself that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we, then we turn to art. You tell yes. the art to keep us, As an uh, yeah. to keep us, to keep us going, to keep us fighting. And maybe when we when we fight on, we, we feel a little more youthful. And maybe the word youth is is not age. It's it's that it's, it's that, that the spirit that's still inside yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a question that you've probably been asked a million times over, but of course let's do it for the people that are present here yeah, today, sure. right? How did you derive that fairy tale? The name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is interesting. Uh, I, I really look up to this underground filmmaker called Nick Zed. 
and 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 when I completed the film, I actually contacted this New York underground filmmaker. I says, "Hey, this is my film." He says, "I watched the film. I like the film, but I hate the title. It's it's pussy, <laughs> fairy view. It sounds so gay." It's, but but this nigga said, so he can say anything he wants. Right. <laughs> uh, um, but, but why the why the name? Right? Yeah. How how did it, you? It came I very natural. Yeah, I was expecting you to actually say like, oh, I had all these other names, <laughs> and then I yeah, decided yeah, on yeah, very yeah. well. But yeah, no, yeah. You're it, it was an 18-year-old teenager uh, yeah. uh, coming out with a name for school. I couldn't think of anything. I just, I just very very naturally called it Fairyville. Maybe maybe it's this. Um, uh, I watched a lot of teen movies and this a lot of teen movies have this Ville thing going on. Yes, you know, Smallville and this Ville and that Ville. Ville. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So very naturally, Ville comes in, and very naturally, I wanted a, a, a fairy tale world, fairy, and I know that uh, fairy as in fairy doesn't sound so good. You know, yeah, uh, that's why it, you changed the spelling. Put it in old English, you know, yeah. fairy, yeah. fairyville. It just sounds big uh, to me. But uh, people who heard it say, "Hey, it sounds very gay." It's okay. I'll, I will. I will keep the. I'll, I'll <laughs> I do it with, with, with typography. I do it with, with uh, all that to to give that that that, that weight uh, of this dystopian. Yeah, uh, you know that's spoken like a mm. true um a filmmaker because mm. I myself believe mm. right. Like if you are in the process of writing yeah. a book or film or whatever, right? Just stick to your guns. You know, stick to the title that that mm. you have in mind. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you know what? It's still yours to own. Yeah. Yeah. So Fairyville came from there, and I want to talk about the cast. Yes. Okay. Uh, so there's Tanya Graham, and she plays the mm. the rebel girl, yes. and then there's Chloe, yes. who's the it girl. Um, I'm most interested in the in the nobodies because they're all very distinctive, and this is very much me coming from like the I mean just for the interest of if, of any aspiring actors or directors or whatever, right? Like, how did you decide? Like, okay, Leon Sim is going to be Paul. You know what I mean? And you know, and then there's Leia and there's CK and Taurus yeah, yeah. and all that. Like, when you chose the cast, right? Mm. Like, was there? Because you can see that everyone looks so different from the other. So, did you attach an identity? Although they are all nobodies, but did you sort of attach a role and an identity within the group um, for the four yeah. actors? Mm, um, of course. I, I think uh, when when nobody's was created, you know, uh, did this film take a long time to, to complete? Mm -hmm. uh, we tried to shoot a film already in two thousand to two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Yeah. Right. So the audition came about around that time. So we had the island wide search. I was going to uh, interesting clubs. So I was I was just hunting people, asking them to come for casting, and then I could meet them. Um, and um, as I I already had drawings of each of them. They all had a distinct look. But when I start casting them, I start to look at characters and I recreate my characters according to them. Okay. So I met Farid, he has, before he had dreadlocks, he had this really, really big hair. And then I met Jay, I met, uh, I met Leon, and then I could, I could kind of readjust my characters. Paul initially was this, in my original drawing, was a skinny poet type. Mm. Uh, and when I saw Leon, I, I, I reinvented Paul to be a little bit more of a Tom Sawyer type, you know? Right. Like, a, like a little every boy, uh, but with messy hair. Uh, 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 with the cute uh, little shawl around his yeah, neck all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, correct. And a little bit uh, smart alecky, uh, think his... his, his uh, so I imagine the nobodies as more than just misfit, misfits who are being bullied. Uh, yeah, this, exactly. yeah, more like people, well, where the world that's so radicalized, everybody's sitting aside, they choose to be not somebody, not anything, but to be outside, to be the nobodies. And I thought that was a brilliant uh, 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 concept for uh, a clique, right? A clique, uh, uh, a gang. But, um, so they are the nobodies, and, and all of them have a different uh, Role yeah. in 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 the <coughs> traditional teenage group. so almost like a true form of rebellion, right? Because they chose like okay, we you can't even put us anywhere. We decide that we <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah, don't belong yeah, in yeah, any of the boxes yeah, yeah, that yeah. you have created. You but know? in a way, in a way, while they want to see themselves as outside, they they are forming something. Correct. They are, they, they, they are, they're still creating another yeah, box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Creating another box. But I think that's the way uh, uh, mankind, humanity, humans uh, just. We need to belong somewhere. And you can see that these these teenagers actually, while they are saying that they want to be outside, they actually yearn to belong, and and they care for each other. And and, it's, and at the heart of it, the story of four teens who who are trying to look after each other and 
and, and makes sense of the world. Yeah. And then let's go back to what mm. you said earlier about the fact that a few people or a lot of people sort of said that the movie was kind of very Americanized and you have said many times that it's not, right? It's just an alternate uh, mm. world that you have created. Mm. Um, but when you look at, you know, the, the rebel saints mm. and the setting and mm. then that space where they they yeah. sort of, they go and they, you know, that mm. their main mm. uh, hangout, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where in your mind, right? Mm. Where is that? Like, if it's not American and if it's not local, yeah. like this, this, this space. Like, mm. what, what, what? In terms of the visuals, what were you trying to achieve? Mm. Um, I was just trying to reimagine what a Singapore, what a Singaporean film can be. You know, it's interesting in the sense that people are asking me, that, "Is it America?" There are also a lot of people that ask me if, if this is Singapore, maybe because of the things that we talk about. Right. But it's, it's neither. It's neither American or Singapore. It's shot in Singapore. Uh, 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 all of it shot in Singapore? All? all of it shot in Singapore. Okay. <laughs> I lost my shade of thought. Um, and I, yeah, I wanted to reimagine what a Singapore film can be rather than what a Singapore film should or is supposed to be. And it's, okay. it's a little bit of a problem, you know, uh, for an artist who's trying to create create a world uh, called Fairview. Yeah. Um, the problem is Singaporean film festivals or Asian film festivals look at this and go like, how, how is this representative of Asia yeah. or Singapore? Yeah. Interestingly, my second film, which is very, very well in the European film festivals, right? they look at it and go, uh, how is this Singaporean? <laughs> how is this Asian? Uh, uh, and, and, and this film now becomes like a, a genuine misfit. You know, it's, it's not exotic or Asian enough mm -hmm. to, 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 be, to be interesting to yeah to uh, Europeans, uh, it's it's not uh, representative enough to, yeah. to fit into the Asian world, especially in the cultural sense, you know, the, the world cinema cultural sense. And in America, Americans are a little bit more like, I don't care, as long as it's English, you can understand it, it's cool, it's good. They want to take it, and then they were excited about it, they loved the team, they loved the script. When they went, finally went there, the yes. cinemas were a little bit apprehensive about promoting it because Again, college, like when college shootings. <laughs> yeah, we have another we have another issue. So, so um, uh, but I believe that um, a writer, an artist, a filmmaker sh should never self censor. This is this is a genuine concern or expression that I want to have, uh, uh, and it's something that I needed to express in my work. Uh, yes, the safer thing that I can do is to readjust my script so that I can reach a wider audience. But I think that the work sh should. Should should be its own thing, and and uh, and I I'm deep inside. I'm actually happy that I completed. I did not self censor. I didn't compromise. Uh, I didn't adjust uh, things that I I was told to adjust in order to to get a better promotion, get a get a big studio on board. Uh, and this is very new. Uh, what a Singapore film can be rather than what be, yeah. Yeah, can be. Yeah. And I think it's the, the job of the artist to push and what? take those risks, right? Okay, so you've been hearing our voices quite a bit. I want to throw uh, questions to the floor now. No, no, not I want to throw. You guys, uh, feel free. Do we have any questions from the floor? Anyone? Zeng is right here. Now's your opportunity. Well, I'm going, him I'm with questions. Take a picture. This is this is nice. <laughs> This moment makes me feel less of a misfit. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was I was wondering if there's you know if there's any filmmaker or any uh, you know films that that has probably inspired you to because I think as I mean as a as as a performer myself as an actor like I tend to derive inspiration from people you know from outside so is there anyone that inspires you like you know that as a filmmaker and mm. Mm. thanks for the question. Thank you very much. Uh, when I grew up, there's a, there's a reason why I'm holding, uh, I decided to launch a DVD in the bookshop. Right? When I grew up, uh, a lot of my heroes are, are, are more than just filmmakers, they are from everywhere, they are from pop culture. Uh, I read a lot of comics, I hang out at bookshops a lot, I, I, I 
I play truant in school to go to bookshops, so I'm so uncool that way. Actually, I'm you're like a, a dream child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I play truant in school while, while they are going for video games. I play truant and I and I leave my friends who play truant with me together. So they said, let's go and play video games. I leave to go to MPH right. and I will spend five hours there. And uh, it, it's, it's yeah. So my heroes are comic book artists, uh, uh, um, uh, writers, uh, uh, book writers. Um, Authors, science fiction, uh, science fiction writers, um, filmmakers. Yes, as, as well. Uh, I love Terry Gilliam. I love Oliver Stone, um, um, and uh, rock music, um, uh, punk rock. Uh, and I realized that uh, what I get out of all these people is how uh, they are using their art to do something more than just sell, mm. entertain. They're using their arts for 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 oh, for a purpose. For yeah. purpose for purpose, for a message, or, or even if it is energy-wise to, to show us and show people like them uh, what art can really do for the human soul, uh, to find people and connect people and, and, and to know, let people out there know that they are, they are not alone, they are people like this. And I think that was, that was very inspiring for me and that kept me, uh, that kept me going when things got really tough making the film. Any other? Yes, we have another question. Yeah. Uh, you took a while to write this. Yes. Um, how relevant do you find it for today's youth uh, and today's world? Thank you for that question. I I wrote the script in 2006. I started making the film in 2008. Already, that was way before the 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 extremely. I mean. It was already things were already very surreal after two thousand one, but things got really really surreal in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, with the Occupy movement, with, with a lot of uh, with this 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 rousing uh, rebellion, thoughts of revolution all over the world, uh, um, everybody taking sides, and now even more so, how we are more divisive today than we were ever before. Uh, mm, I think it's more relevant now than it was when it was released in 2015. Yeah. Mm. The us versus them war, I see that so much more now. Mm. And I think it's time for us to, to realize that differences uh, are actually what makes the world a little bit interesting. D differences are not excuse for, for division. Yeah, And the rebellion that I talk about in very little, it's actually the rebellion of the mind. Re the, is that is that is that will or that or that or that resistance to to not compromise the, the your soul, and your your spirit, and what what you what you believe in, bending according to how how systems or or, or, or influences are trying to, to put you. Right. In. And unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, but I should say like, you know, you just mentioned the word influencers, right? And I think that also, I mean, although they're doing like a, such a great job, but with social media and influencers also, there is always that divide also that creates more yep. divide, you know yep. what I mean? And, and I guess like instead of creating more of a divide, mm. we should start appreciating all the differences and embracing the differences in mm. each other as opposed to, yeah. you know what I mean? Yes. Because the differences are more mm. glaring, yeah. you know, with all the things that you see online. Mm. So instead of seeing that as like, oh, she's different from me and he's different from her and blah, 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 we should actually go like, oh, this is great. Now we have yeah. a whole bunch of people with different yeah. ideologies and yeah. we can all actually just learn from each other yeah. and take yeah. from each other. Right. Right. The learning from each other is, 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 is a very important thing. But we, what we see in this day and age is that there's a lot of false unity. There's a lot of uh, um, illusion of unity. People coming together for a certain <coughs> hashtag, for a certain cause, exactly. when actually, it is actually divisive. It is different from raising an awareness about something so that we can now understand the plight of a minority group or plight of a marginalized group. It is now raising a cause so that we have somebody to fight for so that we can pretend to be united. And I see that as a, as a concern and maybe it's a concern that's not very well... Uh, I'm not a social media influencer type. I don't like blogs. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to talk about this in an article or in an argument. It's a waste of time. Yeah. But I'm an artist, I express that with my work. And I didn't sort of express it, I've already expressed it. And, and it's so surreal that uh, things are 
things are going in this very very interesting direction right now. Yeah. So there, mm. there are so many different ways, right, to express mm. or, or to fight for a cause. I hate saying fight for mm. a cause because I feel like fight in on its own is, yeah. you know, it's got such yeah. a bad connotation, yes, right? Yes, but right. like, yeah. So mm. you know, I mean, if you can't do it with with you know going and yeah. you know with a billboard yeah. or with a, you know, what I mean, like you can always just yeah, yeah. just yeah. find a different way through art or through a film or through a book or poetry or whatever. Mm. Um, okay, so we understand that uh, Fairyville was selected by Asian Film Archive. Yes. Um, for cultural and heritage reasons, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think it's a great. I mean, Asian Film Archive is as an organization is one that uh, uh, exists so that you could uh, filmmakers being very unorganized people might lose their films, they might disappear, they might die, and, and the films disappear with them. And I think I'm um, just I consider myself really honored for them to to want to archive for you to see that there's importance in this film so to put it in the archives and also with their support to release this DVD yeah. so Faraday um, uh, is completely independent I, I, it is truly and completely independent I don't even have a studio I, without a studio I can't even release this film so uh, I don't have the support of even a small independent studio it's not, it's not nothing it's, it's myself so uh, 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 I, together with the film archive I paid for the, the production and everything and, and all of this is this is and 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 for them to come in to support a, a totally independent person yeah. i think i i i'm just very grateful yeah. yeah so it's a great film it addresses all the right causes and it's going for i mean i know we should have gone <laughs> later but let's just yeah, tell them yeah. now since we're already yeah. talking about the release uh, of the dvd correct, correct. um how much is it going for uh it's going for 25 dollars at the section yeah. So that's very affordable. So pick it up and support our local independent <laughs> filmmaker. Yes. Um, and the statue. The statue, the statue. Uh, is a collaboration with uh, uh, a local toy maker called Flap Slap. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's going for $120 as a collector's item already. We have three colors. And um, the first color, the one that we call it Liberty, the Liberty Edition, the one in green, is already completely sold out. We had um, orders from Mexico, from the US. Uh, even even uh, somewhere in Europe, I think. Uh, so Hong Kong. Yeah. So now we've got these two colours left, yeah. and, mm. and do you know like in what quantity? So that you know, I'm not sure. I think that's that has numbers. But, uh, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah. Um, twenty five for the DVD and one hundred and twenty yeah. for the Rebel Saints. Okay. Mm. Um, why did you? I mean, like I mentioned in the earlier, right? Mm. Uh, this is, I would say, the perfect space for for something like mm. this. Uh, but why did you pick books actually? Right. Uh, I think it's a perfect, um, a perfect place to, uh, to to launch a DVD. I know it's a DVD. This is a bookshop. <laughs> Do people even buy DVDs anymore? I don't care. <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's a novelty. Uh, a DVD is physical. A film is so intangible. A film, you know, this day and age with streaming, it's everything is so so transient. You can hold on to it. I want to hold on to something. So so. Uh, uh, it, actually, it was actually me talking with Flat Slap and then we creating the, the toy and then it says hey I want to do something physical so we decided to do the DVD and, and the DVD even though it's a disc right there's a lot of printed matter in it uh, there is a 6pp phone uh, uh, I, I used to be a designer before I was a filmmaker so um, uh, everything that's inside that 6 post was designed by me and, and I could write something about it so I could put a package together and I thought a bookshop. People go to bookshops for a very different reason. People go to a, 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 a DVD shop or go to Netflix for the film. They go to Netflix because they want to be entertained. I think people go to a bookshop because they want to to be inspired. And I thought, uh, it's, since it's a place that I I uh, I frequent, be it Tower Books or Borders or Kinokuniya or what small small other bookshops that have sprung out here, you know, I thought it would be. Uh, Absolute excellent place, and I'm just happy that Kenny Lake from Books actually believed in it enough to say, "Hey, it's okay. Let's have a DVD here. Let's yeah. have a launch here. No, Let's have a toy here." <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us more about? So I actually did my homework, and I found out that uh, the Rebel Saint is uh, the protector of rebels and thinkers. Is there anything yes. else that I left out? It's more or less just that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in the, in the film, it's called The Mother Saint. Yes, yeah. we refer to it as The Mother yeah. Saint, yeah. And, uh, people have asked, uh, what does it mean, you know, the book and the gun? And, and, uh, mm. First and foremost, the meanings are whatever you 
you, you want it to be. Um, uh, and I think, uh, and that's the, that's the nature of symbolism, right? Uh, you don't, um, they, they exist and, and they allow the people to, to interpret it. But from the context of a school, why, why such a physical statue? Why such an imposing statue? Um, and actually we decided the actual, for the film, we actually made it. It's an eight feet tall statue on an eight feet tall podium. I was actually going to that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah we, just, we chose to make it uh, so that it's not CGI. A lot of people say, hey, just do it in, in CG, 3D. No, 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 I want my audience to see it. I want my audience to feel it. You can't feel the... Just, so we wanted it big and, and I had Chua Boon Ki, a local sculptor. Uh, 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 he speaks in Chinese. I tried to explain fairy view in Chinese to him and what it is and he looks at me for a long time and I think he says, uh, well, main part, right? I, I know what you're, you're making with this film. And he gave me his suggestions about the statue and how, in his opinion, uh, as a sculptor, I think I really respect that Chua, Chua himself is an artist himself. He tells me that I believe that the statue shouldn't put his finger in the trigger. The finger should be outside the trigger. Mm. I was like, wow, that's so cool. Because when the finger is outside the trigger, it becomes an idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, let's go for it. So, so, um, so on the physical statue that there's the eight foot tall, eight foot tall podium in the film, uh, the finger is outside the trigger. Uh, this is based on the original prototype. He crafted a, a prototype first before he made the bigger one. This one, the, the finger is inside the trigger. So we have this very interesting, uh, uh, uh uh, meanings in these two different stuff. And and I have to ask you this: How long did it actually take to make <laughs> the statue? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's easy for him. He's a he's a veteran. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I I think Chua. Um, this is he's more than just a a sculptor. Sculptor. I think right. he's, he's 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 good with uh big sculptures. So I think he uh, interesting thing that he shared with me. I really bonded with him because we. We talk about things like art and meditation. And, uh, uh, when he told me uh, what was his youth like, he, he, he told me something about how he chose to stop studying art and went into shipbuilding so that he could learn about structures and how to create huge, huge things. Yeah, so that he could now create. Uh, this is nothing to him. I think he could create really, really huge structure, structures that could attack, be attached to buildings and they could hold and they could withstand weather. So, uh, and and you all actually destroyed it in the movie, didn't you? Yes, we did. Oh, was that heartbreaking for you? <laughs> <laughs> I I told the sculptor before he made it, I'm going to destroy it. And he says, "All right, go for it." <laughs> and and I think like also what we would all love to know mm. is, um, you know, I I don't know how many of you here are yeah. aspiring filmmakers or, or writers or actors or whatever. Uh, but at the end of the day, it comes down to dollars and cents. Yes. Also, are you okay to reveal to us what the budget of Fairy is? <laughs> Um, uh, in 2015, when I released it, every reporter has asked me this question, how much was the film made? And I, and I said it very clearly to all of them that I will not review the budget mm. because uh, that was 2015 and I don't want to anybody to judge a film based on a number, mm. all right? Mm. Uh, whether it's too high or too low. Uh, this is maybe in 10 years' time I will. I told them that it's not 10 years yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, 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 just, yeah. So, yeah. Because that's, a, that's, such a, that's such a Singaporean question. <laughs> how much is the film and, and, and what do you, where do you get the funds from and, and uh, how, what, what are some of the challenges you, that you go through? Uh, um, uh, and all, they're, they're valid questions, yeah. I really understand telling the story about struggle, but... Right, right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm but, happy. But I, I think, like, more or less, it wasn't it wasn't so much like, trust me, I'm anything but Singaporean in my mentality, <laughs> in terms of that. Yes, yes, In terms yes. of that. Mm. So I think I was kind of, like, getting at the... You mm. know, like, when I asked, like, aspiring filmmakers yeah. and all that, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the budget or, or maybe, like, what you needed to spend, mm. meaning, like, I guess the question should have been probably phrased as, you know, um, does it take a lot? Yeah. Or, yeah, or yeah. you know, uh, mm. should you not even think about it if you only have five hundred dollars so in your pocket, or you, you know what I mean? Like, like. Correct. Correct. Uh, I think. I think. No. I think asking the question is, is not wrong. Right. 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 It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's yeah. just the the whole uh, the readers who who take the number and yes. how they how they how they mix uh, how they quantify or or judge a film based on the number, yeah. uh, which is something that I just don't correct. even want to get into. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so yes, I I don't. Yeah. It's 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 not enough to make a film like Cherry Bill. I make a film like Fairview for not the right budget, but not the right amount of money. I depended on a lot of uh, uh, goodwill, friendships, 
uh, I depended a lot of talented people. Uh, de- depended a lot of help, a lot of good patrons, uh, investors. Uh, it started out with this gigantic budget, and then I scaled down, and then I scaled down, and then I started making for this amount, and I still don't have this amount, and I went on that. <laughs> and 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 it's but uh, one we got out of it, we got we got a film out. Right. So contrary, mm. I think to to mm. to believe that uh, yes. to the belief that uh, mm. usually like you know you don't get yes. the the support mm. that you probably want. What I'm hearing from you is mm. that you can actually get the support mm. that you want. Yeah. Um, if you're making a film. Yes. Right. Yes. Right here mm. in yeah. your in in Singapore correct, as well. Correct, 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 correct. Yeah. So that's very encouraging. Mm. It is one thing I want to say to to young filmmakers, uh, and to young artists who are looking for, uh, to to get things done. It's not so much about what you you ask for. Mm. It's also very much about what you give, you know. Uh, we we sometimes I look at blogs or I look at posts that talk about how this person asked me to do something, he's not paying me, he's paying me peanuts. You can't. You don't understand that uh, to create real independent work requires the spirit of collaboration, the spirit of wanting to 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 achieve something, to to help a friend achieve his or her dream, mm. so that he or she may one day help you achieve your dream. And maybe it need not be. Asking back that same person, it's it's this whole collaborative mindset that 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 giving mindset that uh, uh, our young people need to 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 learn to have as well, uh, so that when we the uh, when we when we give uh, uh, you get right I I I think it's I think it's there a lot yeah and I think people have given a lot to help me with my my films uh, earlier films and and I've tried to to give. Back not to them, but right. to to different people, and and, uh, and right now I'm an educator. I love being an educator because as a filmmaker, I, I take so much from people. <laughs> no, you gotta shoot this for me. Yeah. I need your time. I don't care. The shoot is not over. Come back. <laughs> uh, 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 this is so important, and I I take so much from people that 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 uh, uh, being an educator allows me to just. Not worry about anything else, and I, uh, I could in the four-hour class time, in the five-hour class time, just, just, just put everything. Up. This this whole session mm. has mm. been very very yeah. educational. So I'm gonna go back to the floor again. Anyone? I mean, like, well, Zen is still sitting here right in front of us, and you have the opportunity <laughs> to ask him, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I have a question, Zeng. Um, yeah, I think every independent filmmaker has struggles, you know, realizing that. Realizing their dream, so if you could have the time again of making very, very little again, what if anything would you do differently? I mean, I'm not suggesting you've got it all of a sudden you've got yep. a pot of gold, but if yep. there was something that you could do differently, for the film, what would it be? It's a very good question. Recently, I watched uh, Zombie Pura. Uh, that was interesting. Jason and myself, we were trying to make our films around the same time, 2008, 2009. We, we were probably sending uh, our pictures around the same time to different people. He couldn't get his film done at the time, struggling, myself as well. Uh, and then I made Faraday in 2011, 12, with a lot of help from friends. Um, 2015, I released the film. Jason released the film last year, from Bikura. Then I watch Zombie Pura, I look at the production budget, I look at how, how big his crew was, look at how good visually things look. He had an assistant director. <laughs> <laughs> he had a producer. He had a marketing team. He finished the film. It's still low budget. It's still very, very indie in spirit. I said just one thing. You can not stop me. <laughs> uh, 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 and, and there's a lot of... There, there is a bit of a... Maybe, if only I had waited, maybe I waited for it, and then, then later I told myself, no, 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 if I waited, I might never have made the film. Mm. Uh, 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 I, I might have, life would have gotten to you, and, and, and I would not have made that film. And yes, maybe I did it without a producer, maybe I did it without, and without a marketing thing. After, I don't have a marketing budget to put my poster on every bus stop, or, 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 or have a, a Facebook ad campaign that was run and managed by a, a company with Mediacorp support. So I don't have all of that. But I made this film, and I made this film the way that I made it. Uh, no compromise with the actors that I want to, with the people that I want to. Uh, so compromises were made because I couldn't afford certain things, but they were they were all under my control. 
Um, and I think I'm proud of it. Yeah. So no, uh, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything. There was a part of me that says maybe I should make it when when the money is right. When I got everybody's. But then again, maybe no. I I would have missed other things. Maybe I got the money, but I lost my actors, or I lost my I lost the time for something. Mm. Anyone else? <laughs> so it feels like it's was launched some. I know some years back, feels, but it feels like chapters of life. Like so, much, been, so, so much, so much, so well. Where's uh, the very real take you and your audience from then to now? Interesting. I think uh, I don't know how far where Fergus has taken me. Um, I still know that it is the responsibility of the filmmaker, not just to finish the film when it's done. It's the responsibility of the filmmaker to find its audience. And and yes, I'm still working hard to 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 look at possible places, possible venues, possible ways for me to find new audiences. This is one. This is a great opportunity. Um, having the having this statue made and having these statues reach people who have not watched the film, so people who like the iconography of it. Uh, um, uh, that has they know nothing about the film. It's a way for me to put my work out as well. So, where has Fairview gone and taken me? I'm not sure if I know how to answer the question. Mm. But it made me feel a sense of uh, fulfillment, completion. When, whenever I had a screening. Um, and when a, when a teenager or a young person or an adult comes to me and, and tells me how much the <coughs> teens spoken in the film means something to them, in spite of how the inner nature of this film, in spite of how uh, not glossy it looks, uh, makes me realize that this thing is worth doing. And when and when uh, and when my actors show it to their friends or people approach my actors and tell them things like that. And and when my actors feel really glad and proud about it, I feel very happy that they feel happy. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, it's been what? 2011 made your first film, right? Yeah, that film, right? Um, 2011 is when I made it, and I finished it in 2015. So okay, it's eight years since uh, yeah. then. Yeah. Um. So what um insight or what will you bring? Because you you have uh, possibly evolved. A lot yes. since then. Yes. What will you take to your next film, next project? Right, 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 right. <laughs> you are going to work on your next project, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, yeah. I I choose the projects that I made uh, very, very carefully. I never stop writing. Uh, even after shooting for review and writing, there are a lot of things. Uh, as of now, there is no chosen, decided next project. Um, um, but there are, um, unlike E Saints, my first film, where it's about being the lie, where it's about screw the lie and mm. face the truth and, and be afraid of what you fight for, uh, there is no direct, but for this Fairview, uh, a message for now. Uh, uh, but there are mm, teams of that I'm, the current teams I'm writing about revolves around. Uh, I don't know if I should say it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I want to share it since it's a intimate <coughs> place. Uh, uh, revolves around uh, mental slavery and how uh, how, um, how our, our, our minds are controlled and and, and how we have respons we, it is our own responsibility to to free our own minds. Yeah, because revolve around the teams like that. Yeah. One <laughs> final question, but I guess two of course will answer. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I do have one. Yes, yes sure. I was wondering, because this is set in the um, teenage years, right? So I was wondering, um, how would they have progressed? Are there ideas? Mm -hmm. Because you are the creator of these characters, would yep. they have progressed after so many years? And how would they be you mean, in the adulthood? Yeah. Are there ideas for a sequel? Yeah. Um, There were, I don't know if you say this because it's not been, uh, there might be no follow up to this, but uh, 
I have already met up with uh, it's an interesting question everybody who watched this says hey looks like it's not over right it's, it's going to be something like maybe maybe in 10 years time <laughs> it's not something that's right immediate and, and there's no rush for it I don't want to, to jump on the bandwagon of the excitement I have a, a conversation with Netflix as well already and there was a little bit of a, a, a suggestion or a discussion of of a, a TV series based on this world, how it's set over there. We came up with the idea of uh, naming it the delinquents. Um, and, uh, but personally on my thoughts, yes, it sounds like an exciting opportunity not to be missed, jump on it. Don't, uh, I think it must be done right. And, and, and uh, I feel, hmm, I haven't thought further about how I want to, to expand this world. And I do not want a, a third part of this world I consider saying the first part very good the second part. I want the third part of this world to, to diminish any anything of the, the other the previous two. So no rush. <laughs> uh, but so that's like a maybe. Yeah, there's a possibility, a right? Yeah. But if it's anything it's about about where is this going? Where is this very uh, good is a critic on rebellion. Um, but yet it's everything about rebellion. Uh, but where is this going? Or maybe if there is a possible team following this, is where does it go when it dies? Mm. Where does it go when it dies? Do, do you do you die with it as well? Yeah. One final question. What is the one thing you are able to do from what you're To get out of Portugal. Yeah, thank you for this question. Oh no, you stole my last question. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just kidding. That's a great question. Uh, yeah. What? 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 One thing I want people take away. Mm. No, I think it's. I want people to to take away something, uh, uh, and and that thing shouldn't be dictated. I think they should. I, I would love for them to tell me what they took away from mm. this film. I would. I I would welcome anybody who has ever watched the film to just come to me and tell me what they took away. Oh, yeah, correct, correct, correct. I think that's 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 why that's why it's art. It invites rather than dictates. Uh, that's why it's art and but that's why it's not an article, that's why I'm not a, a politician, that's why I'm not a a, a philosopher or you know like an author who who puts a, a point of view out there. I put multiple points of views and that, and that's what cinema allows me to do. Uh, I put multiple points of view I I allow my characters to, to make all sides of mm -hmm. all sides of the argument, all sides of all sides of the struggle to be to be to be felt, not just seen and read, but felt uh, through the through the art of cinema. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I have this. Thank you for the question. Maybe one last I was just going to say, okay, can we give Zeng a round of applause? Oh, yeah. And of course, the, the Rebel Team. Oh, yeah. so